Oi, eu... Thank <laughs> हेलो हेलो आई एम प्रीति अग्रवाल मैसेज 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 जब मेरे ही कनेक्ट होते हैं I'm not able to join by my unique ID. Please reply me for that. Okay. 
मीटिंग हेज नॉट स्टार्टेड येट family join directly
फिर जब आप स्टार्ट करो संदीप सर तो एक बार साइलेंस जोर से बोलो गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल पार्टिसिपेंट्स वेरी सुन वी विल बी स्टार्टिंग अवर फर्स्ट सेशन सो प्लीज बी ऑनलाइन
when will it start hello at what time it will start a uh, dear participants uh, once the inaugural will be over we will be starting our event okay thank you ma'am आज किसके लिए आलू भिंडी बना रहे ना प्याज तो उसके लिए है
When will session start? Please confirm when will session start. ये तो बोल रहा है
A very good morning to Honorable Dr. P. D. Patil, Chairman, Dr. D. Y. Patil Unitech Society. Today's guest of honor, Mr. G. K. Pillai, Director and Advisor, Valchanagar Industries Limited, Pune. Dr. Rakesh Dolakia, Director, D. Y. P. I. M. R. Dr. Meghna Bilare, F. D. P. Coordinator. My dear colleagues and all participants, I, Dr. Priyanka Dut, extend my warm welcome to AICT Atal sponsor for today's online faculty development program on managing business through emerging technologies and management information system at DYPMR. Dr. DY Patil Institute of Management and Research is a premium institution of management and computer education in Pune, Maharashtra for more than two decades. DYPIMR functions under the well-known higher education brand of Dr. D.Y. Patil Unitech Society, Pune, under the visionary leader of our Dr. P.D. Patil and Secretary DYPIMR offers MBA and MCA programs which are affiliated nationally renowned Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University. Institute is accredited A grade by National Assessment and Accreditation Council NAC and also accredited by National Board of Accreditation NBA for its MBA program. It is also awarded as winner of Best College Award in 2019 by Savitri Bhai Phule Pune University. With this brief introduction of our institute, now I would like to request our director, Dr. Rakesh Dhulakiya sir, who is having more than 35 years of experience in industry and academics, the man with a distinct vision and a fountainhead of illuminating ideas, an idol of knowledge, experience, and inspiration to all of us for welcome address. Sir, please. Thank you, Dr. Priyanka, uh, and very, very good morning to Honorable Dr. P. D. Patil, sir, the chairman, Dr. D. Y. Patil Vidya Krishna, and also to my dear friend and colleague, Dr. Uh, Mr. Pillai of Balsam Nagar Industries. I also very heartily welcome all the participants who have taken their valuable time to attend this very, very meaningful and a very profound faculty development program on a theme which is the order of the day. You will, you will see during these five days that my faculty team members have taken a lot of trouble to not only select the right topics which are very contemporary, very relevant, but also all the very distinguished eminent speakers from various industries as well as from academia, who will be enlightening you and it will help you to conduct your classes in a more meaningful and a more understanding way. I thank you all and especially all the speakers who have taken their time, valuable time out, to help and guide and inspire our faculty members as well as the audience. In fact, the audience also happen to be the faculty members from all over India and we are all very thankful to you, distinguished speakers, for taking your time. 
Thank you so much. Thank you, sir, for your words of wisdom. Once again, thank you, sir. Now, I take privilege to introduce a visionary leader, true source of inspiration, a mentor and guru for all of us, Honorable Dr. P. D. Patil, sir, Chairman of Dr. D. Y. Patil Unitech Society, Chancellor Dr. D. Y. Patil Vidyapit Pune. Dr. P. D. Patil, sir, is the architect of Pune's academic complex of Pratishtan, who has transformed the vision of Dr. D. Y. Patil into reality by establishing many colleges within a short span of time. He is also an active social worker who played a prominent role in development of educational institution. It is his dedication and dynamics that has elevated the institutions in Pune complex to international standards. He is a member of various reputed organization and recipient of prominent award. Now, I would like to request Dr. P. D. Patil, sir, to give the inaugural address. Sir, please. Good morning to Director, our Chief Guest, Dr. Pillai, uh, all the staff members and all the students. Firstly, I congratulate to Dr. Dolkia, sir, that his institution has been selected for this program out of 39 institutions. Sir, hearty congratulations. It gives me an immense pleasure to organize AICT training and learning, that is, Atal Academy sponsored five days online faculty development program on managing business through emerging technologies and management information system from 2nd to 6th November 2020. This 39th online event is inaugurated by August presence of Dr. Vinay Sasarabuddhe, Honorable Chairman, Parliamentary Standing Committee on HRD Government of India, New Delhi. Chairman ICCR, New Delhi, along with Professor Anil Sahasrabuddhe Ji, Honorable Chairman, AICT New Delhi, and Dr. Manish Gupta, Director, Google Research India, Advisor, Video Film, Infosys Foundation, Chair Professor, IIT Bangalore, which was hosted by MES and IMCC Pune. I welcome expert speaker for this session, Dr. G. K. Pillai, who is going to talk about MIS, public 200 plus participants from different systems who are attending this FTP from all over India. At the end of this FDP, participants will have enriched knowledge of emerging technologies and its impact on business, MIS, and its importance, a role of decision support system in business intelligence. I'm sure this faculty development program will upgrade the competencies of participants through instilling technological stimulus. My best wishes to convener, mentor, Dr. Rakesh Dulkia, sir, Director, Dr. D. Y. Pati Institute of Management and Research, Coordinator, Dr. Meghna Bilare, and his team members for the success of this event. Thank you all. All the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir, for being with us and enlightening us with your kind words of wisdom and for being an ideal example of inspiration and motivation for all of us. Thank you once again, sir. Going forward, now I would like to request FDP coordinator, head of department MBA, Dr. Meghna Bilare, who is having 
rich experience of more than 15 years in teaching and research for briefing about this FDP. Ma'am, please. Good morning, Honorable PD Party, sir, respected GK Pillai, sir, director, sir, and all the participants from different parts of India and varied streams. Once again, a hearty welcome to you all. At the outset, on behalf of our institute, I express my sincere thanks to AICT Atal for sponsoring this FDP, which is well coordinated and mentored by them. It really gives us immense pleasure to share with you all that our FDP, we got an overwhelming response with more than 200 registrations and due to which towards the end, we had to restrict the registrations. Thank you all for showing interest in FDP organized by us. In these five days of journey with us, you all will definitely have a learning as sessions are dis and discussions are scheduled from industry and academic experts. The FDP on managing businesses through emerging technology and MIS is basically designed to upgrade the competencies of academicians through instilling technological stimulus, which is need, which needs to be ignited accordingly. Uh, all the areas of emerging technologies, such as role of MIS in decision making, e-commerce, use of ERP, advanced Excel, artificial intelligence, and machine learning, we have tried to include it as it's need of time to learn and understand all these concepts and their applications by academicians. And during this pandemic period also, we have realized how important technological development in virtual world is for us as well as for our students. So this program basically emphasizes on developing the aptitude amongst the faculty for emerging technology through adopting the innovative pedagogy, ensuring value addition to students. We look forward that this FDP will help you all in updating new teaching methodologies through upcoming technology to deliver quality education. Wish you all a very informative and learning week ahead. Thank you all, you, thank you all, you all once again for being a part of this FDP. Thanks. Thank you, ma'am, for giving insights of this FDP. In addition to that, uh, I request all participants kindly note that attendance would be monitored as per the screen time. Tests will be conducted on the last day of FDP, that is 6th November. After every session, feedback link will be shared on WhatsApp group and Zoom chat box. Link will be open for 30 minutes after every session. It is mandatory to fill the feedback form. All participants are requested to put the questions in chat box. Last 15 minutes of each session will be Q&A sessions. Now, without taking too much time, I would like to introduce our today's guest of honor and first session speaker, Mr. G.K. Pillai, sir. Mr. G.K. Pillai, presently director and advisor of Palchanagar Industries Limited, Pune. He is an acclaimed management leader and is a well-known name in both the public sector and private sector industries. He has a total of 47 years of professional experience. He has steered some of the big names in the industries. He was the chief executive of Fisher's and Mal Limited, an immersion company, and thereafter was the chairman and managing director of Ranchi based PSU Heavy Engineering Corporation, HEC Limited. He was also the chairman and managing director of the Pioneer Machine Tools Company, HMT Machine Tools Limited. After superannuating from both these organizations, on 31st December 2011, Mr. Pillai joined one of the India's most famous engineering groups, Valchanagar Industries Limited, as the managing director and CEO and continued in these positions 
for eight years, from February 2012 to March 2020. Sir has been the recipient of various awards and recognitions. Few of them. In the year 2009, he was awarded Scope Excellence Award for the year 2007-8 from the then Honorable Prime Minister Dr. Manmohan Singh. In the year 2010, he was also awarded as National Nuclear Society Award for Industrial Excellence. So, sir, we are very fortunate to listen from you on the topic Management Information System Key to Decision Making. So I request Pillai sir kindly address the gathering. Am I audible to all? Hello. Yes. Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay, good. <clears throat> Dr. P. D. Patil, Chairman of D. Y. Patil Unitec Societies, Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research, a very well-known educationalist in the whole country. Dr. Rakesh Dholakia, Director of the Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Management and Research. Dr. Meghna Bilare, the HOD of the MBA in Dr. D. Y. Patil Institute of Management. Other dignitaries attending this program, all participants of the faculty development program of AICTE, ladies and gentlemen. First of all, it gives me immense pleasure to be taking part in such a momentous occasion as the chairman did mention some time back out of 37 institutes for Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Management and Research to get this FDP program allotted to them itself is a great honor to this institute and at the same time it's a great recognition by the government of India about the role played by Dr. D.Y. Patel Institute of Management and Research. So my hearty congratulations to Dr. P.D. Patel and Dr. Dholakia and his team for getting this honor. It is equally a great honor for me to give the initial talk, the first talk of today's program. As I have been told that there are more than 200 faculty members of management across the country who are taking part in this five-day program. And I'm very sure that by the end of the fifth day, all of you will be richer in experience, richer in knowledge to go back to your own institutes and deliver the same to your students. The topic which has been selected is fantastic. Managing businesses through emerging technologies and management information system. What a wonderful topic. If you look at the last nine months, you know, right from February till now, after the you know, COVID-19 pandemic came into the existence in this world, the role of technology has really gone from, you know, from A, to Z, today people have started realizing that technology is perhaps the only way where one can be abreast with what is happening. I am today giving this talk sitting in a small town in Kerala. I have come to Kerala and I'm giving this talk to almost all these 200 plus faculty members from a place called Palakkad. So this itself is a technology. Again, in the last six to eight months, people have realized that due to technology, Im imbibing new technology, people can really reach to greater, greater height. So first of all, congratulations for the selection of this technology, this particular topic. My topic today, let me come back to my topic, management information system, key to decision making. 
it's a very if you look at it this topic is in two parts one is management information system and second is key to decision making now what is the decision making now if you really look at it sometimes people think that decision making is done only at the topmost level no decision making is done at every level rather right from when you are a student you start taking your decisions or even before you become a student it, you know at still earlier age a decision is taken slide number 1 yeah so decision making if you really look at it it's a daily process everyone has to indulge in it as i said a student he has to decide what stream to choose what portion to study there is innumerable every day a student takes decision housewife is another excellent example of management graduate there is nobody else other than a housewife who combines all aspects of management whether it's a hr whether it's the marketing whether it's the finance whether it's an operation a wholesome management is normally done by a housewife so again a decision she has to take and she takes decision on her own way if you look at a defense strategist they have to take their own decisions if you look at a sportsman you know every type of decision has got different you know time lag you can take some time to take a decision you can't take you can't waste a single moment for taking a decision take for example a sportsman if he is getting a ball a googly at that particular moment he has to take a decision how to handle that ball how to play that ball so that's again a form of decision making decision making is done by every individual who is available on this earth now then why are if it if it is so simple then why are we taking so much time to discuss such a topic in such an important faculty development program i'll come to that so there is something called we are going to talk may, mainly about corporate decision making when we are our topic itself is managing business now managing business it could be a, it could be a large business it could be a small business it could be a homely business but what we are now going to talk is the how decision making is being impacted what is the methodology of decision making at corporate level at business level and what are the emerging technologies for taking this decision next slide please if i look at the corporate organization our we'll be mainly concentrating our talk on the corporate organization there are de decision making done at various level worker level employee level a slightly higher supervisor level manager level still top top management or heads of department level chief executive officer he has to take different decision the board of an organization the board consists of various senior people the board again has to take decision making so the decision making you cannot have a single formula across the organization it varies let's go to the next slide please back page number 4 go back next ah uh, next yes now uh, when we talk about decision making how does somebody take a decision now simple methodologies past precedents many times people take the example of past precedents that oh yes this particular customer i had is such a person he is very trustworthy so a past precedent people still do that you can't say no culture and beliefs there are many who still take decisions based on culture you will be surprised that even in this 21st century there are many organizations who do not take who take decisions rather based on culture they do not take a decision if it's a rahu call they don't take a decision it is there 
even in 21st century there are many on a tuesday they don't take a decision so it's important to know that there are still people still maintaining the culture belief based decision making the third one is whims and fancies you may think that people are not today using whims and fancies but no my dear students for my dear faculty ladies and gentlemen even today people take decisions whims and fancy based is it right no not at all we are going we are not talking about right wrong now i am only going to first tell you what are the various types of decision making traditional methodology the fourth one is intuition based and let me tell you there are many 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 senior executives still follow this intuition based methodology of decision making oh ye mera intuition tha why did you do that oh i felt yeah this is my intuition i think it will it will succeed it may succeed it may not succeed it's a probability theory but intuition based decision making and the most important today which we are going to talk is data based now data based decision making is the one which really gives you it's a scientific methodology of decision making today we are in a scientific area the first four methodology i think it is not a right thing for organizations to follow it is very important that we follow data based decision making and that is what we are going to talk today let us go to the next slide now comes why is mis first of all what is mis it's a management information system why is mis or data essential for decision making so we came to one conclusion that we need data our decision making will be based on data it will not be on just you know intuition it will not be on some other traditional thought process it will not be on whims and fancies it will be purely on a data base now what is the benefit of a data based decision making there is an objectivity which is very important the more you rise in the organization objectivity is very very crucial rather than a gut feeling second consistency in decision making you know you should not look like you are a ruler who goes on changing his decision every alternate days there has to be consistency in decision making a leader a business leader is known by the consistency in his decision making so data provides you that third is a scenario building or sensitivity analysis we can really from the data available with us know what is if what if this scenario happens what if that scenario happens so again data are essential for scenario building and sensitivity analysis and as i said just some time back a what if analysis to consider all possibilities and risk i think this is very 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 important the covid pandemic 19 has shown to the world that whatever people used to think that there will these are the risks will happen they had never imagined a risk such as covid 19 brought into their businesses brought into this world brought into the society so does it mean that we should again predict something can happen like a covid it can happen it cannot happen but when we make an analysis we have to we have to make an analysis depending on the various risks let me put a very simple example if you are making a decision today <clears throat> i will say wait for two days to even a result of the us presidential election may, may have an impact on the decision what you are going to take if you are in a software industry if you are in a highly technical industry so possibilities of whatever is happening across the world is also equally important and the last point when you take a data based decision making is maximization of benefits we'll come to that little bit more in in, in detail later on go to the next slide please <clears throat> now as i said based on data if you look at my slide on the left side there is the data what does the data do data is actually data of what all things has happened so the first point is what happened how many people came into this super into this store and of this how many were ladies and how many were men this is the data 
so in a in a multiplex you find out from the data how many youngsters came how many old people came what is the type of people who visited the multiplex so what happened is one information why did it happen that's again a point now if you look at it the sale of laptop has suddenly gone up in the last four months just gone up now why it has happened that also somebody you know they the data will give you an idea that prior to march 2020 the sale of laptops were only a certain number but it has become 2x or 3x of that number could be because of the pandemic people are working from home everybody has been given a laptop and so that could be so it also gives you the data will also give you why did it happen the third is predictive what will happen the data will also give you a prediction of what can happen in future if the trend of the students joining mechanical is coming down or the students joining and management faculty is coming down the trade it can also predict that yes tomorrow it may go up depending on the various data which you will be able to collate and the fourth one if you really look at the first three descriptive what happened diagnostic why did it happen predictive what will happen and like today if anybody is making an analysis last week he would have made an analysis of the u.s presidential election if trump wins these are the scenarios if trump loses these are the scenarios this is a very important information database information and the and the fourth one which is very very critical is prescriptive what should i do based on the, the data you you can really make out what should i do what is the decision support what is the decision sometimes the decision is through automation nowadays there are many times the decision is even taking on automatic route based on automation based on the data it just says yes if you find that in a in a departmental store or a ladies are coming say 70 percent than 30 percent men so it is automatically you, you will find that ladies apparels ladies clothes ladies items are stored more in the store and it gives a automation it gives an automatic decision now so these are all the various possibilities of decision making based on the data go to the next one please so we come to a decision making we are still not come up to our mis we are still talking about the decision making because as i said the most important thing is decision making mis is a tool to allow you to make a right decision or an appropriate decision but most important is to as i said decision making the decision making there are very few cases where automation helps you in taking a decision but in the end the decision making is taken the, the decision is taken by an individual by a team by a board but ultimately even if it's a board which takes a decision the chairman of the board is responsible for that decision he gets data from various people he gets suggestions from various people but final ultimate decision for him to take that decision is ultimately it is his decision so decision making is i think a more important process than anything else as i said a, a, a mis is only a tool for the decision making process to make it successful now let us come back to seven steps to effective decision making the first is identify the decision should i go if you if i look at the college perspective should we take more should we include more people in financial management should we increase a new branch or should we introduce a new branch like hospitality management or hospital management or agricultural management these are all things or we should should we reduce the number of people of students in say operational management now there can be many such thought process which comes 
so one is you have to identify the decision what decision we have to take then very important gather information gather as much information as you can what is going to be the trend what is the global trend how is it going to have an impact in india etc etc gather information across one of the points which i wanted to tell all the faculty is information 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 i think in without information today a man is blind if he does not have sufficient information in management parlance they say information is your strength some time back i used to say and you know i used to always say that knowledge gyanam paramam balam that is knowledge is power supreme now today knowledge is available freely so what is power supreme information is power supreme knowledge can be available information is available but you have to get information gathering of information and this one may think it's a very simple thing but let me tell you one thing getting correct information is perhaps one of the most important thing you will find that when you when you go to a multiplex multiplex or you go to some big you know shopping mall you will find one lady standing at the gate and she goes on pressing the numbers and she goes on putting whether it's a boy is a girl is man woman etc that's all for information the third point is identify alternative now whatever you want to have your decision whether it's for whether is starting a new course in agricultural management or a new product a organization wants to start in the factory or if if something else so you have to look at alternatives identify what are the alternatives which can be available weigh the evidence now again evidence how do you weigh the evidence with information you go on testing certain things whether yes what do the people say whether the people are ready take for example hospitality management or hospital management let me put it hospital management i know dy patel itself has a huge hospital and they have their own hospital management but i am talking about there are many small hospitals across the country run by one doctor or two doctors or a 10 doctors together they are not managers they are just an expert doctors they can do fantastic diagnosis they can give fantastic treatment but are they good managers no they are not so a hospital management becomes a very useful thing in today's world covid 19 showed to us that how important is healthcare and healthcare services so weigh the evidence choose among the alternatives if i have to decide a new product i may not have the money sufficient enough today to go for all the four products so then i have to choose among the alternatives which is better the institute can decide that if you have to do a health service management or a agricultural management or some other new management program now institute can decide among the alternatives which is priority number 1 these decisions can happen only if you have data the next point is take action you take an action based on all these things and then you have to review your decision a periodical review six monthly review one year review two year review five year review so this is in short the decision making process i have simplified it <clears throat> but it varies from organization to organization it varies from <clears throat> industrial organization to a fmcg it varies from a educational organization to some other organization but in short the principle will remain the same go to the next slide please <clears throat> next slide please yeah so we came up to <clears throat> back yeah we came up to <clears throat> the various how the decision making is process is actually managed now the important is what does mis mean let us come back to the first point of my talk that is a management information system what is mis so mis is a plan system of collecting storing disseminating data 
in the form of information needed to carry out the functions of the management. Now, this is a typical de definition which most of the organizations actually carry out. Now, will this remain same to across the organization? No, it may vary. But in short, there are one a system of collecting and storing information or data. But ultimately, the form of MIS will not be the same. In an engineering organization, the MIS reports will be different. In an uh, educational institution, the uh, MIS forms will be different. In a small business, a, a shopkeeper who is running his business, also if he has a good MIS system, I am sure he will be able to take fantastic decisions. Suddenly you go to a shop and you find that he does not have a particular brand of say hair oil or some other stationery or talcum products. That is because he does not have a good system of management information system. Why? Because when a customer comes and your product is not in your store, means you have lost business. You don't want to lose business. Ultimately, why do you do all those decisions? Why do we do all this management information system? Our aim is that one, my customer should be satisfied. Two, I should be able to handle my customers as, as per his requirement. And third and most important, I should make profit. I don't want to lose money because those are the three important things. Go to the next slide, please. <clears throat> Now, objectives of MIS. Now, as I said, first is data capturing. Second, processing of data. Third, storage of information. Fourth, retrieval of information. Many times what happens is you have information everywhere. People are, have information. But retrieval of information is very, very important. You look at your own personal life. You suddenly want to have a picture which you had taken maybe four years back when you went on a holiday to say Paris or somewhere else, you, you know it is there in your laptop, but you're not able to locate that picture when somebody is asking that picture to you. So retrieval of information and fifth one, dissemination of information. How that information can be dissipated for use to the organization. I think that is equally very, very important. So these are the five objectives of the MIS. I'm sure we are not taking questions now. I, this is what the format which I have been told. So I can go ahead with my presentation. Is it the way? Uh, who is that, Priyanka? Can I go ahead with my presentation? <clears throat> okay, fine. So I will, I understand that I can go ahead with my presentation and whatever questions people have it, as that may come in the end of the session. We'll wait for that. Go to the next next slide, please. Okay, fine. So now comes the MIS levels of function. Now the management information system will give you the slide sharing is gone, is it? Hello. Yeah, fine. No, no. Back, 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 back. Yes. Yeah. Next. Next. Yes. MIS levels and function. As I was saying, can we have the same MIS formats, MIS reports, management information system? It actually, what is the output of the MIS? Its output is a report, which I will show you to you in the next few slides. Will it be the same report for everybody? The answer is no. At the lowest level, workers, basically what do they do? They do the transaction processing system. A worker level will actually, as I said, the, the lady standing at the multiplex gate, what does she do? She only collates the data or a clerk in an organization, he collates the data, he enters the various transactions, how many invoices have come, what the type of invoices have come, what is the payment which has come, 
so transaction processing system which is very important mind you which is very important if the transaction processing system is not correct then your whole mis report becomes erratic or erroneous so that is one second comes the middle management the management information system again to the middle management so people who are in the purchase manager level in an organization they have they get to know information what is the amount of paint which has been purchased in the last 6 months should i then get a better rate from my vendors so this is a management information system which can come so the middle management middle managers they are the one who are actually taking certain decisions their decisions can be effective based on the mis reports what they get if it's the marketing manager he finds that that a certain product is selling very well a certain product it's not selling very well so what does he do he has based on that information based on that he finds out the product which is not selling what is the reason for it's not selling a analysis can be done or a product which is selling very fast he does an analysis that what you know what are the reasons why this product is selling very fast so this is the middle manager's role the senior managers or the departmental heads or the hods as you call them they are basically the decision support system ultimately some more information goes to them and they are able to take decisions depending on their individual businesses their individual departments a welding head department a, a hod or the welding department can find out more about what are the type of welding requirements needed in the market today is it you need special materials like stainless steel or inconel or titanium or you need still the carbon steel material welding so that information based on those mis reports which he get he will be able to take decision and the most important is the executive the top level the ceo level coo level executive information system which is very crucial for the organization because ultimately it is the ceo who take those decisions and based on actual and if you really look at it in the top it is ultimately the one man who ultimately finally takes that decision but for that all the people below have to really work very well go to the next slide please <clears throat> now this is just to give a an idea to the faculties who are attending this program you know what are the various types of reports i'm not going into that detail because it's a very very large thing there is something called a summary report there is something called a funds flow report budgeted and actual profits is a report machine utilization is a report perhaps people who are you know looking into the operations management people who are going to look at factory they have to find out the machine utilization report i am sure even in hospital if they have a scanning machines if they have various other machines they will be finding out what has been the utilization of that machine because ultimately an idle machine is actually like a blocked capital nobody wants that so based on that report one can really take a decision yes maybe my rates are very high of the scanning i may bring down certain rates so that i may get more customers for that then you have the on demand reports you have the financial reports inventory report is a very very important thing inventory report every organization should have that inventory report including a small shopkeeper should have an inventory report he should know if nor soup has not gone it is there in his stock in his stores for the last 6 months or 8 months something is wrong it is not worth keeping that product because nobody wants that product sales reports budget reports production reports i am not going into the detail but these slides are available with you these are some of the examples of mis report which will go to the manager level the hod level and the ceo level go to the next slide please i thought i'll give you some examples of a real life mis which normally i am now going to talk more about the manufacturing industry from where i come what are the various types of reports we generate and based on which how decisions are taken if you look at this particular it's a very simple production trend 
I have shown this thing from April 2018 till March 2019, a whole 12 month production trend. The first blue line which you can see is basically the tonnage which every month that particular foundry has done it. So if you look at the tonnage, tonnage goes from 540, 550, 577, 619, 613, etc., etc. And similarly, you find in the bottom line basically the actual loss or profit. You find that the company making this particular castings is not making much profit, except for the month of August where it has made a profit of one lakh. All other months it has made a loss. Now, what does this help? How does this help? Various ways this information can really, a production manager will think of why not I increase the production every month from 540 to 550. So let it, can I make it to 700? Now, if you have to make it 700, what is the info, what are the extra additional revenue required, capital budget required, etc. Now the man sitting at the top, what will he look? He will look at this MIS report and say, is it worth being in this business? In the whole 12 months, I have made profit only once in one month, in the month of August. So his point will be that, can I scrap this business? I let me go to some alternative business. I'm not saying it is an easy decision, but it will actually prompt him to really think, is it worth spending so much management bandwidth effort to run a business like this? This is possible only based on the MIS. Otherwise, what happens is, oh, chal raha hai, the business is going, people are you know, uh, working, etc., etc. But the data which is shown in this graph actually opens the eyes of the top management it should also open the eye of the workers of the management, lower management. Hey, we are not making profit. The company may decide to close this foundry. So this is the advantage of an MIS report. Go to the next slide. This is again a MIS in report in terms of order book of the organization in first one is April 19 and second one is in June 2019. If you look at it, I just put various divisions without, you know, so that it be, doesn't become a, you know, it's not very obvious. So there are various divisions, A, B, C, D, etc., etc. If you look at the first one, I'll give an example that A division had a order book of 16,956 lakhs or 169 crores in April, but it has come down to 132 crores in the month of June. Okay, it has come down, the order book has come down. Whereas B, product B, has actually gone from 169 crores to 178 crores. Now, what does this, now this particular MIS report can be used by various people. The people who are at the marketing heads their sales and marketing uses this information and tries to see what is wrong with my particular one product but if, if the orders are not coming or if the orders are going up he can take a decision yes i can reduce the price because my sales are going to increase i can give better discounts so this is again a information system which really helps the management helps the heads of department what should be the action. It also helps the lower, lower than heads of department, the departmental managers, it helps them also. Oh my God, my order booking has come down. I think I have to pull my socks, I have to pull my sales team so that I really meet the order booking. Go to the next slide, please. This is again a similar one, MIS real life example of order breakup. The first one you find that there is something called a trap, saddle structure it is for the space isro about 25 lakh you find that isro flight hardware is about 17 crores are there now there is a uh, a small one is there about 1 lakh is it worth why is it only 1 lakh what was my budget so this is again order book split with 
product then it gives you which of those typical product has got a good business like if you look at point number g it says pairs pair parts orders are actually 11 crores 1049 lakh so it is perhaps higher than many of the other products so is it not worth it to put some extra effort to increase the spare part still further go to the next slide please yeah now this is again a now if i look at this mis this slightly different order booking performance in h1 that means from april 2020 when the covid started till september 2020 what is the blue in the top graph showing you the blue in the top graph is showing that 620 lakh was the plan for order booking in the month of may only 85 lakhs has been booked in the month of may 486 was planned in the month of june 220 has only been booked in the month of june if you really look at it it gives you a data what you plan you have not achieved particularly in the month of april may june july you know what and by august you actually achieved almost why because that was the peak of covid organizations were not able to get all the people to start working so this mis gives you an you know you can analyze why it has happened now the next point is in september 20 it has again come down why it has come down so that mis will actually give you a a some sort of a information then you will be able to go for more analysis and the mis again is what is the plan for the next year that is from october 2020 till march 2021 what is basically the plan of the business so that is again coming as part of the mis the future plan is based on various projection what the business will happen what the automobile industry will happen etc so the the mis as i said one is the basic data of what has happened second is what is it going to happen for that also information is needed and it comes in the form of an mis go to the next slide please this is again a real life example that i showed you for the order booking now this is for the sales again from april 20 to september 20 if you find the blue line is actual sale which has not gone as per the original budget basically because of the last six months has been very bad <laughs> whereas you also have a sales plan for the next second half which is again you know on various projection go to the next slide please now this is a very important mis which is needed by the finance manager the chief executive and heads of marketing what does it mean it actually gives you on a it's basically on a daily basis it comes what is the available cash so if you look at it on 22nd july 2019 the available cash was 559 lakh what is the actual collection which came is 1348 lakh other income so the total and the total outflow which has happened is 1540 this is just a representation this is i am i am sure every yes, organization i am sure every all participants are requested to mute yourself please pilai sir kindly unmute yourself right yeah so what i was saying a cash flow uh, uh, am i audible okay. yes sir so, yes yeah. sir so the cash flow you know mis is perhaps the most important mis for any organization everybody should know what is the status today of the organization of the company of the institution what is the cash availability this is a very very crucial information and we, from once you have this mis 
suppose some expenses are going to happen tomorrow we can stop that expenses we have to stop that expenses or we know some money is going to come we can be after that customer to get that money so this is another mis go to the next one please <clears throat> so this again as i said is funds collection what you have planned in, in the various months how it has happened and as i said a cash flow information mis allows you to take your decisions very prudently if you want to incur an expense and if you don't you find that you are not having sufficient money or you are not going to get sufficient money in the next couple of months it is better not to incur those expenses so these type of mis report are very very essential for the operation set for the finance set and for the ceos without which he cannot take a judicious decision go to the next slide please now this is a very interesting as i said again it it revolves around cash what is the total creditors the company has got if you look at it this is a very interesting mis which is very useful for organization now the number of vendors from 0 to 30 30 days 73 customer 73 suppliers are there for whom the payment is due a total amount of 257 lakh now this mis gives you a aging analysis that means you also know that more than one year if you look at the last two columns 366 to 730 days and above 730 days that means more than two years there are nine number of vendors for whom a total amount of 13 lakhs have to be paid to them now a ceo may like to find out why this uh, this nine vendors have not been paid more than a year more than 365 days it could be possible that the vendor has not supplied the correct material vendor has not uh, replaced the uh, damaged material etc but the mis allows you to take a decision now if this vendor has not supplied you the corrected material even after more than one year on account of his 13 lakhs is pending for them a decision can be taken not to go to that vendor again because these type of mis reports will help you take your prudent decision similarly debtors you find that yes there are total 95 customers are there who are not paid you more than 500 and 95 lakh at this there are three customers for more than one year they have not paid you or there are another three customers for more than 180 days now if a customer is not paid you for more than 180 days a question should come a decision can be taken should i do business with this customer i may not do business so these type of mis reports help you to take a decision very very fast a very accurate decision so this is another example go to the next one please now <clears throat> this is basically a top level a ceo level mis now this will really give you give the picture of the company in a quarter by quarter i'll just explain you what is what type of mis is this if you look at the first column it is april 16 to june 16 quarter just before that it is january 16 to march 16 quarter the next one is april 15 to june 15 quarter that means one year before the first column and the next one is october to march 16 so i will not i am not going to the detail because it's not worth spending that much time but let us look at the first two columns the first column is april 16 to june 16 and second column is january 16 to march 16 that means the last 3 months and the uske pehle wala the earlier 3 months this gives a snapshot of the company that the company's sales was 76 crores in the april june quarter whereas it was 112 crores in the january to march quarter now this is one information it also says the materials what has been consumed is 35 crores in this quarter whereas 60 crores in the pre previous quarter the employee cost is very interesting you look at the employee cost this quarter is only 20 crores whereas the previous quarter it was 23 crores now how can you reduce 3 crores then there could be a reason that some people would have resigned some people would have been asked to go etc etc so if i look at the ebitda ebitda is the 
earnings, you know, before tax, uh, depreciation tax. And that is a, prof is a sign of your some sort of a profitability. It is in this quarter, 1,114 lakh, that means 11 crores, again, the last quarter of 16 crores. And interest, what I paid is 14 crores this quarter, again, the last quarter of 15 crores. Now, I'm not going into the details. What I wanted to tell you is, this is a snapshot of this company. If you look at it, this company, you go to the last line, last line, the loss or profit, the company made a profit. No, 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 back, back. Last line of this slide. The company made a profit. Sorry. The company made a loss of eight crores in April to June quarter, whereas the company's sale was 76 crores. Whereas in the previous quarter, even though the sale was 112 crores, the company made a loss of 15 crores. Now, this is a very useful MIS information. The company top management can actually, based on this MIS, they, you know, they, they actually study the whole MIS into full detail. Why this has happened, how this has happened, how to avoid it, what is the, in, if the interest rate has gone up, why it has gone up, is the banks charging, overcharging, should I change the bank? Hundreds of actions, hundreds of decisions, will come on one particular MIS, which is at the top level. So this was, again, in various examples of MIS based on which. Now you look why the manpower cost is how if employees come for an increase, we can always say that, that yes, my manpower cost is, if I look at it, is 26% in this quarter, whereas the average in the industry is maybe 20%. So my suggestion my point here is a mis report gives you a very clear picture for management to take decision go to the next slide please so ultimately what this is perhaps the last slide of my talk at the slide point i will just take few minutes later on so ultimately what happens is our point is that is for efficient decision making i think that was what we started our talk that key to decision making decision making is important everybody knows they always say that it is always better to take a decision than rather than not to take a decision okay a good manager or a good leader takes a decision he doesn't sit over it for a long time but for taking that decision what there are various methods i'm telling you there are various methods but in today's world MIS is a very key method by which a management, by which the owner, by which the executives can take decisions, can take fairly <coughs> correct decisions based on data. Now, these data are also based on whatever has happened or what you predict. Can it always be right? <coughs> there are many organizations who had invested a lot of money till December 2019. They never expected a pandemic 19, sorry, a COVID-19 pandemic will suddenly engulf the whole business environment. Many of them are lost. So disruptive technologies, disruptive, you know, thought inputs are part and parcel of any organization. A second important point is why do we do this, you know, MIS system or uh, some other database information system? Why? Because one of the biggest perils of any organization, any business is risk. Risk is one element. Today, perhaps, I don't know whether many, many of you are aware or not. In the business scenario, risk taking is supposed to be one of the most typical area. Every organization has actually risk officers, you know, risk managers who, who actually analyzes what are the risks. Yes, a COVID can still be, can sprung a surprise, but still a risk is always assessed that is it better to do work in a country like Turkey today, or is it better to go to Africa, or is it better to go to some other place? They're all risks. 
So similarly, the banking system, what are the risks of the banking system? Do you anticipate the interest rates to go up? So these are all based on certain data, which people have to actually analyze those data. So in short, what I wanted to tell you, ladies and gentlemen, who are in this program, that most important task in any organization, it's immaterial whether it is an engineering organization, it can be an educational institution, it can be a household, it can be a shopkeeper, it can be a mall, it can be any, it can be the defense, it can be the government of India. Even the government of India has to take a lot of decisions. If you really look at it, whether how should we, how should we behave with China? That's a very important decision. What should be our next step with somebody else? If tomorrow Trump doesn't win and Joe Biden becomes the US president, what should be the India's way? How do we, the so the decision making is a continuous process, 24 hours has to be 24 hours, I'm telling you, even you think, I'm sure you think even at night, if tomorrow you have a seminar in the morning, you start thinking even at night, I have to do this, I have to do that, I have to do this. So this is a part and parcel of organization. It's a part and parcel of all, all executives, all individuals. But we are, as we discuss business, for us, data is most sacrosanct, number one. And the data, data brought into a certain format which can be easily understood and is known as management information system. And this management information system, the data which comes to you, comes to us in the form of a ready-made you know, pamphlet to know what has happened, why it has happened, how it can be avoided, what do I do in future. These are the various actions based on this management information system. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a long topic. The time has almost come, 12.45. I have been told that yes, we should close the talk by 12.45, giving more time to question and answers by various uh, participants. <clears throat> it's almost 12.44. I think I uh, would like to by this talk and I, in the end tell you one, just one important thing. Wherever you are, when you talk to your students in whichever institute you are, just tell those students that one executive position the decision making, I'm telling you very is on data, on data, on data. Why I'm saying that is many times it happened that, oh, he's a friend of mine. Or, I don't like this man's business. No. When you are working for an organization, the only thing which depends for the organization is its performance, its success, and its growth. And for that, data is the only information available. With these words, I would like to once again congratulate the DY Patil Institute of Management and Research for conducting this faculty development program for, you know, fact of the country on such an important topic like managing businesses through these and management information systems. My Katya and Dr. Meghna next five days program, which I am sure will be equally a various uh, business leaders and faculties coming and talking to the other faculty members. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure of uh, talking to all of you. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir, for your valuable insights. There are a few questions from the participants. Uh, first question is, what are the challenges people face while creating MIS reports? Yeah, you know, the first and most important challenge what every organization face while making an, you know, as I said, the collation of data. 
the collation correct data is the most important challenge how who that that a culture has to be built in the organization i'll give a simple example in the organization now if the man does not give a very correct picture you are manufacturing certain items in your production shop certain things get rejected you do not give a correct picture how many things get rejected then the information system becomes you know not a very accurate information system so the truthfulness of data collection and data collation is most critical yeah next one yes sir thank have you I, have i answered the question yes, yes sir yes sir uh, another question which parameters we should consider while building the mis infrastructure for the organization as i said some time back that you know mis mis across the various levels of the organization so uh, the chairman of dy patil group will require a different mis dr dholakya will require a different mis dr meghna will require a different mis so it will be actually level of mi the types of mis depends will again vary from you know level to level that is number one number two the the mis what dy patil institute is uh, creating will not be the mis what walter nagar will ever you know uh, will use it it will vary from organization type of organization level of people who are to see that mis reports so that again as i said in in one of my you know uh, slides i had shown you levels so it depends on employee level supervisor level top management hod level co level or the board level so it varies yeah uh, yes sir thank you so much another question is what strategies do we need to follow for successfully applying mis to a business sir as a strategist uh, yes which strategies we need to apply you know uh, as i yeah go ahead yes Can sir answer yeah yeah sir yeah see as i said if I, you, you looked at the, uh i you look at the first slide which i have showed it is a simple thing about the foundry what is the total production every every month and what the profit so that is a very simple uh, now based on that mis every different person will have a different strategy the production manager will think oh i should increase my production from 500 to 700 the owner of the company or the ceo of the company may think if this particular foundry is not giving me any profit why should i keep this company why not i close this company so as i said the strategy of studying the mis report and taking a call it will vary from level to level if you look at the last slide which i showed you the profitability of the organization it's a slide of the total sales the cost the manpower cost this is again a strategy the hr department can find out that every quarter my cost is 20 crores now how do is the 20 crore in line with the market rate market uh, expenditure or is it very high or is it very low so the strategy is depending on who you are what level you are and what is the actual thought what is the given by the top management yeah yes sir very well explained by you sir another question right. is very interesting am i is used by managers for decision making then what is the difference between mis and dss a very important very use absolutely very uh, pertinent point i you know the basic difference is in reality it is as i said it is a tool so in 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 whichever tool you use 
ultimately if you think the decisions don't go wrong decision will go wrong but what is important is you are able to make a decision on a specific manner on a manner so that is the most important thing in this whether it's a dss or it's a mis ultimately it is based on database and that, that is more important rather than fancies uh, almost all the companies okay and the decisions are always right i can tell you one thing no as i said the decisions are based on whatever is on the information and all these decisions can again go absolutely you know haywire depending on the vagaries in the market vagaries in uh, the okay sir there are lot of questions from the respondents another question i would like to ask it is a myth that mis is only applicable to the organizations they have who have a large set of data okay uh, uh, my answer to that is uh, you know as i said some time back if you are running a kirana shop just a simple kirana shop okay you can still have an mis system a single man person person alone running a shop you can still generate a small mis on a daily basis on a weekly basis i'll give a simple example of the store in your store as i said does coca cola sell you more or the north soup goes more or some sewer kadal goes more if you keep inventory of stocks you get very useful insights second again the single man kirana shop he can still know that payment collection see now what does that kirana man do he has oh ye bread wala wo uska paisa dena hai kitna dena hai then they go on looking at it or uh, this particular uh, vendor does not give me any credit he asked me money in, in advance so what happens is even this small kirana shop can make a simple small mis for their own benefit he can take decision on that mis on a daily basis weekly basis monthly basis i think that is what is important so it is not necessary you should have a large organization to have an mis mis is what management information system you know i'll give a simple example does your mother our housewife don't they keep a record they keep a record in the older time many times they used to write you know that is a management information system that last month i had spent so much rupees for vegetable this month why the vegetable has gone up expenses for vegetable has gone up so the mis is only a management information system who is the management a kirana shop the owner is the management a housewife the lay, the house, uh, she is the management a large organization the uh, ceo is the management etc hospital various okay go ahead yes sir yeah. there is a last question okay yeah which information technology uh -huh. industry 4.0 are right. the most supportive of the enterprise management process correct oh what are the question i thought you are making a statement no the question is which information no, technology which information again you know you it, you can't have a actual branding that this is the best there are various technologies available depending on which type of industry you are say if you are a a mass produced product the technology available is different if you are a custom built product like a walsanagar industry we don't we are not a mass produced company we are a custom built we build each product to a different specification a technology there will be different so one cannot have a, a an answer that yes this is the only or this is the best technology available across no it varies but yes 
whoever has put that question, I would like to compliment that gentleman or lady, whoever is that. Today, industry 4.0 is a must. Today, if I may take just one minute for the, you know, because the faculty can go back to their classes and talk. You know, the country is actually embarking on this Atmanirbhar Bharat, where a lot of manufacturing will take place within the country. Now, when you have to do that, you and the country stopping imports of various defense equipment. What happens is that those equipments have to be made in India. For them to make in India, it is not the large companies. It is the MSMEs and SMEs. That is the you know the small companies who are go, who will be playing a major role in supporting the large companies. Now, what happens is the small companies, SMEs and MSMEs, don't go for the you know the industry 4.0 or automation in industry, etc. Now, with the faculty who is today attending this program, I think it is very, 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 very important that you are you are aware that MSCs and MS, SMEs and MSMEs will need to implement industry 4.0 into bringing more automation so that they are able to meet the global challenges which is coming as part of Atmanirbhar Bharat. Okay? Any other point? Yes, sir. Uh, there is no any question. Thank uh, you, sir, for your wonderful session. You made the entire session very interesting. We look you, forward to your session in future, as well as we got the we got the information about how to use of use MIS in academics and industry for effective decision making. So thank you once again, sir, for your valuable time. Thank you, sir. Thank you. It's my pleasure. All the best for the remaining session. Yes, Good sir. Luck. Yes, sir. Thank you. Okay, Priyanka. Nice. You made a fantastic program. You did it, the program, uh, computed it very well. Congratulations to you also and all the best. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Yes. Thank you all the participants for your enthusiasm and patient listening. Next session will start at 1.30. So you all are requested to resume back at 1.15. 1.15. The feedback link is shared in the Zoom chat box as well as in the WhatsApp, WhatsApp group. So you all are requested to feel the feedback. It is mandatory. We will we will see you at one fifteen. Participants need to use same meeting ID. Participants need to use same meeting ID. And you need to log in with your unique ID. Thank you. See you at one fifteen. Hello. Hello, ma'am. Yes. Yes. Is there polling, ma'am? Actually, my net was going to disconnect. Ho gaya tha. There is no any polling. Okay. Only Google form is there, na? For feedback form. Yes. Ah, yes, yes. Uh, completed, ma'am. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Your attendance would be measured on the basis of screen time. Haan, haan, yes, ma'am. But the uh, network was uh, down and uh, down ho gaya tha, aur fir se maine join kiya. Okay, yes, yes. We can I'm already uh, uh, live. Yeah, yeah. Sometime mera wo ho gaya tha, to maine fir se join kiya. Okay, thank you, ma'am. Yeah.